In this video, I'm creating a collage, a pattern, illustrations of different but somewhat colorful bugs. Now first, my inspiration in finding what to draw for the week usually comes from Pinterest. And no, this is not a sponsorship or ad. So before you panic, sit back, relax. Traditionally during the week, I will go on Pinterest for no purpose except to be inspired. I already have multiple boards on my Pinterest for this purpose. So if I feel discouraged from creating, I can look back and be enthusiastic about making art. In this case, I already had a specific idea of what I wanted to create. I found myself particularly gravitated to very colorful and magnetizing bugs. Now, I'm not a fan of bugs and I have a love-hate relationship with spiders. But I really like the detail on certain bugs' wings and how colors contrasted and created a completed artwork. So in some sense, their wings are their canvas. I really wanted to get close and personal, detailed. How I achieved this is I used watercolor for the base to achieve the undercoating. And goich is perfect for detail because you can water it out, but the thickness creates control and smoothness for your paintings if you so desire it. With the detailed work of these bugs, I was trying to amplify the artistic creation of a museum of bugs. As a child, I remember boredom. My father or fifth grade teacher would try to animate these characters I saw in a glass enclosure as these parts of my own history. As an adult, somehow there is a fascination a magnifying eye is focused when forced to create small characters of animals. As a creator, you're looking at each detail of the thing. You notice the pores, hinges of its tiny little legs. Even what look like a stick of an antenna are beads. I also find it fascinating that the colors contrast from different types of bugs. Even beetles, being in the same category, still have very different colors. You will never find one beetle that looks like the other beetle. And that is some inspirational shit. Don't be like other people. Researching why some bugs have distinct coloring while others don't, what I discovered is the vibrant reds, blues with stripes and spots actually has nothing to do with attracting a mate. So unlike the peacock, the bright designs on a beetle's back is to warn off predators or to camouflage. Although... How are they camouflaging when they are bright fucking orange? Maybe Arizona? Anyway, thanks Google. Now, I've been using watercolor for a year now. And since the pandemic happened, and I don't know what to do with myself, you know, besides spending more money... I decided it was the perfect time to purchase a collection of goich. Did I say that right? But in attempting this, I realized that I used too much water or I didn't use enough water. It was a complicated balancing of the scales. I'm a student of life. I'm learning. And I think that is one of the most important factors of art and painting and just creating in general. We forget that the point of the process isn't to have all the knowledge already, 
but how you got from point A to point B. This doesn't have to do with the art community either. It could be about writing a college essay. How do you get all the information? What did you discover in researching the specific topic? Did you change your mind due, due to a bump on the road? Did you learn from your mistakes? Did you recalculate your hypothesis? Questions like that make you think more deeply about your process. Plus, if you don't enjoy the process, you don't particularly remember how you got to point Z or B or whatever. I learned that I had to paint in layers with watercolor and goitch. If you try to paint section by section, the painting won't feel... At the end, it will feel separated because the eye will have to do most of the work in combining all the details into one subject. This created uncertainty for me because I had to be okay with it looking shitty before it looked okay or good. When you paint in layers, you have to have the final version in your head. You have to really envision it, but in your mind, which creates problems if you have control issues, like I do. So with watercolor, I really had to be okay with watercolor running wherever the hell it pleased. But I'm here to tell you that the beautiful thing about watercolor is paint only spreads to where water already is. And that is my tip for the day. Anyway, I'll let you enjoy the rest of the video without my blabbering. But I hope today's video has inspired you to do a little something creative today. Maybe study the veins of a leaf you found on your walk this morning. Or to examine the spots of a unique looking rock beside your house. I don't know. I'm making shit up as I go. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.